Hi, my name's Mark Kaplan. I'm president of the board of directors of the Santa Monica Mountain Fund, and I'm joined today by Charlotte Perry, who's our executive director. We're coming to you from beautiful Chesborough Canyon, and wanted to spend some time sharing a little bit about some of the programs we're involved in. When I first decided to volunteer with SAMO, my interest was really driven by my recreational interests. I'm a cyclist. I spend a lot of time on the roads and the trails throughout the mountains. So I wanted to get involved to help with trail maintenance. And little did I know that trail maintenance was really just the tip of the iceberg. The Santa Monica Mountain Fund, in partnership with the National Park Service, has so many other programs going on. The Park Service employs a team of scientists that are involved in research, looking at native plants and wildlife to ensure that we continue to learn about the wildlife in this area so that we can protect this important ecosystem. And there's a ton of work going on around education to ensure that young people from all across Southern California have access to the park, have a chance to experience the park, and in some instances, even have a chance to come work in the park. Charlotte, thanks so much for joining me today. Good to see you. Why don't we start a little bit with some of the work going on around restoration and native plants. I see some interesting things behind us here. Yeah, well, so here we are in Cheeseborough Canyon, which is one of the National Park Service sites. And you can see behind you here a lot of newly planted trees and grasses and other native plants. And um, the Santa Monica Mountains Fund is very involved in helping uh, support the native plant nursery up at Rancho Sierra Vista, which is the other end of the mountains in Newbury Park. And our manager, Antonio Sanchez, who you'll hear from later in the program, um, uh, runs a nursery um, involving a lot of young people. Over the last, um, I'd say, 18 months, two years, he's um, increased the number of native plants grown there by tenfold. So um, we're really excited about the progress that's been made and thanks to a number of foundations that have helped us, including uh, the Metabotic Studio and the Malibu Foundation. That's great. Now, you mentioned that at the nursery, we've involved a lot of young people. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. How have we continued to bring young people, get them involved throughout the pandemic? Um, be interested to hear some numbers around some of the folks we've been able to employ and get involved as volunteers. Sure, well, um, over the last year, we've been able to employ about, well, over 30 young people in various different roles around the park, including work at the nursery, um, the Samo Fun Trail crew has been out. Through the fall, they cleared, I'd say, over nine, ten miles of trails, and they've been involved in um, education programs um, and other facilities work. That's great. And I know top of mind for, for many of our viewers today is, of course, wildlife. There's a lot of interest in, in the animals uh, throughout the park. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of the programs that are focused on wildlife. Sure, well, um, I'd say every year over the last 20 years, Samo Fund has donated approximately, um, on average, uh, $40,000 a year towards the wildlife program. And that helps with buying uh, satellite collars for the mountain lions and for the bobcats and for tracking. So that allows the National Park Service biologists to track the animals, to check up on their health and to understand what might be causing their declines in population where that is the case. Obviously, we are standing here in Cheeseborough Canyon, which is not so far from the 101 freeway, um, which we can hear, you may not be able to hear it on camera, but uh, that, of course, is a huge barrier. And uh, we are one of the organizations helping support the development of the wildlife crossing, which obviously we're hoping is going to break ground in November. That's great. So I think we're going to learn a little bit more about wildlife and go a little bit deeper. We certainly are. And uh, a bit later, we'll be talking to um, Jeff Sikic, who runs the Mountain Land Program. All right. Well, thanks for that information. It was great to learn a little bit more, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the program. Hi, I'm David Szymanski, Superintendent at Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our official friends group, the Santa Monica Mountains Fund. First, you may ask yourself, well, why does a park need, need a friends group? Your tax dollars pay for all of the basic services we provide, but there's so much more good work to do. Our friends group is what it sounds like. It's a group of people who are friends to the park and who work with others to invest in the parks and the people they serve. The Santa Monica Mountains Fund does so many important things for us. They've helped us restore native landscapes. They've helped us with mountain lion research. They've helped to make sure that all kids in Los Angeles and Ventura County, regardless of their socioeconomic 
conditions, get a chance to visit their national parks. Finally, they make sure that the parks are a more welcoming place for all visitors. We're here at Cheeseboro Canyon, where the Santa Monica Mountains Fund helped us with the construction drawings and design to rehabilitate this parking area and to make it a better place for equestrians, for hikers, trail runners, and mountain bikers. And now let's hear from the wonderful Abby Posner and her lovely music that reflects the mountains that we live in. Hi, my name is Abby Posner and I want to thank the Santa Monica Mountains Fund for having me here today. As you can see, I'm outside in beautiful Santa Monica, so I hope you enjoy all the background sounds. Uh, of nature and plains. <laughs> and I wanna thank you for having me at Picnic in the Park. Um, I'm gonna play a brand new song for you called Wishing Well. I hope you enjoy. I'm Jeff Sickage, a wildlife biologist with the National Park Service here at Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. And I work on our long-term mountain lion study. And so my duties are going out there, trying to figure out where these cats roam. Um, we capture these mountain lions and place GPS radio collars on them. And with these radio collars, we can learn a lot about what these animals are doing. So these collars will actually pinpoint the location of where these cats are with a time and date stamp. We get up to eight locations a day. And we can learn about what areas, what 
habitats are they preferring? What areas are they not preferring? Are they crossing roads and freeways? We can identify um, what their diet is. So we'll hike into these location clusters we get to identify what they killed and ate. Even more importantly, we can learn what they're dying from. So these radio collars will send us, immediately sends me a text message when the animal dies or when that collar doesn't move for a specified period of time. So we can quickly go in there and identify what that cat died from. And also these collars help us identify when these animals are interacting with each other. So we can learn about reproduction. Um, these collars will tell us where that mount lion den is. And so when the female is away from the den, we can hike in there and identify the kittens. So our long-term research has shown that um, there's many challenges facing mount lions in the Santa Monica Mountains. Um, mainly being the fragmentation of natural areas. So the freeways are a huge barrier to movement. And we have seen that the mountain lions in the Santa Monica Mountains have some of the lowest genetic diversity ever recorded outside that of the Florida Panther. There's another isolated mountain range in the Santa Ana Mountains um, with similar low genetic diversity. So that's a the biggest threat facing our, our mountain lions. They just have lions born in the Santa Monica Mountains cannot disperse outside of it, and animals north of the freeway, that 101 freeway, cannot disperse in. We've also identified um, six individuals die directly from anticoagulant rodenticide poisoning, so rat poison. And we believe the likely mechanism of exposure to mount lions is from that mount lion killing and eating the coyote that killed and ate the rat or ground squirrel that ate the poison that the homeowner or um, apartment complex or golf course placed out there. The Santa Monica Mountains Fund has supported our research throughout the years in many different ways. I can share a few examples of that support. Um, when the Woolsey Fire came through and devastated half of our mountains, we lost many remote cameras, not only the mountain lion study, but many of our other wildlife projects too. SAMO Fund came in and helped replace all those cameras. SAMO Fund has also purchased GPS radio collars for our mountain lions through the years. And those radio collars are such an important part of our research. It's this important tool we use that really helps us better understand the ecology, behavior, movement patterns, and the conservation needs of lions in the area. And most importantly, the Samuel Fund has also um, supported our internship program, which is vital for our field research, um, and also trains the next generation of wildlife biologists. And now over to Antonio Sanchez at the Native Plant Nursery. So welcome to the Native Plant Nursery at Rancho Sierra Vista. It's a super important nursery, I think, for, um, for a lot of different reasons. This is, to me, the heart and the heartbeat of our restoration program. We're able to outreach to the public, to bring uh, fifth graders in, to show them the difference between a white sage and a black sage. And we can ask uh, retirees to come help us do volunteer work, um, we can employ a lot of local youth and we can get a lot of interns. We do all the scientific work, all this GIS work, all this mapping work, all this seed collecting work. We have millions of seed in just these little envelopes. Um, and from those envelopes, we're able to either keep them for 10, 20, 30 years, or we can pull them. And if we're asked to do restoration, we can grow them. So all these plants that we're growing were collected locally, you know, from our properties. Um, and a lot of these plants, we still have tens of thousands of these same seed frozen in, in our freezers. And then from here, we can uh, grow more plants, we can collect seed, and then we'll go out with our interns and our staff to go do restoration work. And then we can still call up, you know, old interns, we can call up volunteers, we can put the call out to larger companies to come help us do the restoration work, to come transplant. So to me, the nursery, it might just sound like it's plants, and I guess if you look at it just really quickly, it is just plants, but we're able to reach out to science, right? We're able to reach out to technology and mapping. We're able to do uh, seed work, like cleaning and collecting and, and um, storing it. And we're able to go out and get our hands dirty, get on our knees and plant these plants back in. So to me, without the nursery, without having these tables, these pots, this soil here, 
none of the other stuff would be possible. And I think we have a really good restoration program. You know, we, we'd love to get your support here at the nursery um, and know that you're not just supporting plants that um, are gonna go to restoration or even some fruiting plants that we're trying to get the public to grow. Supporting the nursery isn't just growing plants, it's supporting growth uh, for our interns. It's supporting a spot where volunteers and local school children can learn. Um, it's just a good place to be. So um, you know, I encourage you to, to keep supporting us and helping us out and um, keep the future of the Santa Monica Mountains nice and bright. So thank you for your support. And let's hear from Antonio Solorio about Samu Youth. Hello, my name is Antonio Solorio and I'm a park ranger, Samo Youth Program Manager at Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. We're at Rancho Sierra Vista, Setwiwa, and we welcome you to come and enjoy your park. Um, we're at the west end of the Santa Monica Mountains, and at Rancho Sierra Vista, Setwiwa, you're able to explore, hike, many trails that we have and we also celebrate the original people um, the Chumash people and there's a cultural site and there's programming that happens here on weekends and then also plenty of uh, educational field trips for our community schools so I manage our youth development program we call it Samo Youth and it's been around for 22 years now it's a program where we invest in our youth um, it's a diversity equity and inclusion program so we recruit diverse students and introduce them to park careers uh, we give them work experience to the summer and a lot of mentorship um, we have them work on our trails we have them work on community engagement public programming uh, we do a lot of restoration habitat improvement um, and so this is a work experience program our goal is to inspire youth uh, to become stewards of the environment at national parks but back at our communities too because we care about the environment no matter where we go so the Samo youth really contribute to meaningful work at the park last year they got to uh, restore an old uh, footbridge here at Rancho Sierra Vista um, they work at the native plant nursery we go camping now that's a work camping trip and uh, we take them to different uh, parks, Channel Islands being one of them. We do restoration out there just as well. And so every year we hire 18 to 22 students. Uh, these are high school and college students. And after a two year experience with the program, with the crew, what we try to do is integrate them um, within the different park divisions or branches. And um, there are times where then we help them uh, secure positions, um, seasonal positions, uh, term positions, um, or even full-time work at other parks. We would love for them to all continue the park service path. However, the program is bigger than that. Uh, again, we have students that are interested in improving our environment and, and being stewards for our environment. And so a lot of them will go back to their their schools or communities and, and help improve the environment based on the skill sets and the work experience that they learn here at the park. One of the messages I really want to uh, communicate as your park ranger is my appreciation to the Santa Monica Mountains Fund, the National Park Foundation, all of you out there that contribute and help make programs possible like the Santa Monica Mountains uh, Youth Development Program. We really appreciate that. We really appreciate the Santa Monica Mountains Fund for helping us implement and make these opportunities available to our youth and our communities. Thank you so much, y'all. Mountains Fun Trails crew. I'm Tara, the supervisor, and this year is Serenity. And I'm Andrew. The trail crew is maintaining trails and we do brushing, which means clearing the trails of vegetation. We build drains into the trail to allow for drainage on the trail, um, all to help um, clear and repair the trails. We're here at Rocky Oaks and uh, this is one of our properties that we maintain for the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area through the Samo Fun Trail Crew. 
So the significance of this area is we have some great hiking trails through the area as well as this dam. And uh, right now we're maintaining the dam to make sure that gophers and rodents and small critters don't have a place to hide and burrow into the dam to damage the structural integrity. The work of the Sambo Fun Trails crew here is important. We uh, maintain the trails so that visitors stay on trails and they have a safe route. We want to um, reduce the amount of social trails so that we do not disturb the plants and the wildlife that we have here. The mountains are so important to me. I love for people to be able to access these mountains. We have um, so many people in the surrounding area. I didn't even know that this was here before I got this job. So being able to give people the opportunity to come out to nature and enjoy it safely is um, amazing. And over to Abby again to enjoy some more of her wonderful music. Hi again. I'm going to play another new song for you called Low, Low, Low. I've got a lot of new music coming out this year, and I'd love it if you followed me on Spotify at Abby Posner Music so you can find out more and Instagram, Abby Poser Music. Thanks again. Now that you've learned more about the Santa Monica Mountain Fund and the programs we support in partnership with the National Park Service, we hope you'll consider making a donation. We rely heavily on your contributions to keep all of this important work going, and it's really an investment. It's an investment in these mountains, which are a central part in so many of our lives, and it's an investment in this ecosystem to ensure that we protect it for future generations to enjoy. So thank you in advance for your consideration, and I hope to see you on the trail soon. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope you found it interesting. You might want to check out our auction, which will be open until Monday, and there's lots of goodies for you to bid on. And also, please don't forget to donate. Everything that you contribute helps our work to support the mountains. So um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening with your, at your picnics with your friends and family. 